Hi, this is Michael Uslan. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Social Hour, a Batman on Film podcast. I am the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Ramey, and join me today on episode number 128 of this uh, this here show is senior BOF contributor Pete Vera. Boot in pockets himself is back in the house. How are you? It's good to be back. Um, so what's been going on? Uh, nothing much it's we kind of been in like a little bit of a heat wave here in new jersey so we've been getting that texas heat and uh that's that's pretty much it getting ready for september how, how high how high what what you go over 100 oh geez no with the humidity it feels like that it's probably in the high 90s though okay so not, not often does it crack 100 around here it's, it does only for the special occasions but you know, it's, Whoa, it's we've, been, we've been on a roll. I was like last week, <clears throat> I looked at my temperature gauge. You know, you know how you have the ones outside, they're Bluetooth yeah. and they're, you know, uh, freaking like uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, 112. Yeah, we're not getting that hot. <laughs> and, but what was funny is we seriously, a cold front came in Monday and knocked it down to, uh, I mean, it was, it barely hit the 90, it barely hit 90 yesterday. Nice. And it was six, low sixties this morning. We so had that some rain was nice. yesterday, so cool things down. No, I didn't, I don't even know what rain is. What, what is rain? Yeah. Tell me what this you phenomenon and California. is. <laughs> you in California um, don't know what rain is. And, uh, yeah. So, and then, so we got, today is a nice day. I think it's like 70 in the morning and then about 11 next 11 days we're back over 100 it's uh tired of it tired of it all right there you go can you cook an egg on the street probably yeah yeah i've always wanted to do that i've never actually done it i'm that sure hot hot yeah. days you <laughs> drop an egg, an egg in a, on, the on, the, on the street yeah i'm yeah. sure it would i never thought that i haven't thought of that you know so that's funny um, I remember like back in the day, uh, people having their car, you know, cars, eggs, you know, throwing eggs at the cars and it being hot and it just stick into the paint and it, it, it messes up the, is that something you guys used to stuff. do in Texas? You just used to throw eggs at cars on, on hot days? I didn't know. I never did myself. You used but to say that stuff for mischief night. That was, uh. There was some taunt, you know, there were some uh, suspect characters pulling off that tomfoolery, but <laughs> that sounds like something Jake Ramey would do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he seems it's, mischievous, that Jake. He's like the, the furthest person for doing that. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> so uh, if I sound a little different, it's because hell, I got a damn summer cold. And uh, start kicking my ass a little bit. Not 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 too bad, but usually at night it sucks. Uh, but I'm not going to get into medical ailment talk here. You know, I sound like my 81 year old mother in law when she calls her <laughs> friends and all they talk about is aches and pains. What's wrong with them and what's wrong with other people? So anyway, <clears throat> I got no problem talking about what's wrong with other people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so you know, it's like, oh, so uh, they, you know, they've uh, had they they have to have you know, a hip replacement and then blah blah blah. You know, that Ryan Lauer, let me tell you, he's a bit of a troublemaker. Lauer, Lauer's online stirring it up. I'm telling you, you got to watch for him. 
that's come on now. Lauer's Keep your eye like, on him. He, he tries. He gives. He comes off as this wholesome American pie, like you know, kind of guy. But really, deep down, he's he's as he's as rotten as a you know rich's <laughs> heart. We can't we can't stand for any bad mouthing of Lauer here on this show. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on, get you a bowl of cereal and uh, a Mountain get Dew. Some, do, get yourself some sugar in the morning. Yeah. Lauer doesn't All use right. milk, you know that. He pours the dew right into the That's, that's what I asked him one time. Uh, speaking of Lauer, I just hooked him up with a big special guest Uh-oh. on the Batman Book Club. I'll Sounds tell you like off BF air. BF perks are in action. I'll tell you off air. I can't, I'll, let him, big. I'll let him uh, announce it. So, Uh-oh. Jonathan anyway. Nolan. <laughs> All right, uh, this website is called Batman on Film, in case you didn't know. And I thought, uh, you founded this on a web TV years ago, didn't you? That's the story. I've told right? you that story. I, mean, I, I read you that it story. on. Uh, I read it on Texas Wikipedia. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it definitely would be on there. So, if you look under like notable people, it says yeah. Jet Ramey founded yeah. Batman yeah. on Film. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, um, that is that is true. Yeah, that's a true story. Web TV, 1998. Yeah. Look at that. That's how the, wow. the whole damn thing started. And here we are 25 years later. God bless Batman and Robin. Yeah. So uh, with the writers and actors strike, strikes still taking place, there's not much Batman on film to talk about because, uh, yeah, you know, they're... Everything is shut down we'd, for the most part. We'd probably be knee deep in Penguin talk. Actually, oh yeah, if yeah. We're going. I was straight. about to bring that up too. So yeah. yeah, we'd be all in the Penguin. We'd be. I mean, I would figure that by now we would have probably started maybe getting close to, if not already heard some, but would have, we're getting awful close to getting some casting announcements uh, yeah. for the Batman Part Two because you know. He was supposed to start filming. He that it would be Matt Reeves was supposed to start filming part two in November, and that's three months away. And it, now I, it's been pushed back until like February. Now the rumors are that the strike is supposedly nearing an end towards October. Yeah. I don't know how they could yeah, see that two I, months away. I was going to bring that. It's like they're all saying like early fall. It should be resolve so so what is the timeline of well now that we've missed so much time and now that let's say things get settled what is the buffer period that they give let's say a production like the batman before things actually get started like how long before resolution are they getting back into action i would say like in the strikes resolved they'll just pick up wherever they left off okay as long as it's that simple i'm sure reeves is worked on it you know in his capacity uh I'm sure there's there's only so much like pre-production you can do but i think the script's been done so you got it just... when i think about what you just said that reeves has got to be working on it so i mean because basically this is all coming from one mind you know the batman saga this is this isn't one of those you know cooks in the kitchen type deals it's 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 yeah. the mind of one man you got to like, he's got to have an idea of, you know, okay. He's putting his pen to paper. He's, he's drawing his things out and everything. So like when things, when things pick up, I'm sure pre-production will pick up instantly. And like, yeah. he'll, he'll just basically hand them off whatever. And uh, you know, for the little that I know of the movie making process, I just, I mean, yeah, they have he's, uh, him and Tomlin are basically the, the minds behind this. I can't yeah. imagine. He, uh, you know. I mean, they had a pretty good buffer cushion because yeah. it's not coming out till, you know, it's still what two years, two years plus away, two years and two months away. So, to be, and to either, be honest, I kind of think this works in our benefit, considering we just we just hit a rough patch of movies that were just basically yeah completely ignored. I don't think the strike, while it's a horrible thing to go through while you're an employee, because you're obviously not getting paid, and I hope these people make up their money fast. This might be the best thing for the Batman. Just a I, little separation, a little yeah. bit more time. You know, it could be a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, I listened to your latest podcast, the Straight Out of Gotham, and 
interesting discussion about that Variety article and the state of the MCU. It is. Um, it's, it's very interesting because, you know. Yeah, and I went and found it and read it and it was like, that's what I've been saying, there. you know. But I've been saying for a while. I mean, you finally, thing was shared. You know, I don't want to get into a shared universe debate, but, don't or even a die tribe, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, you just get to a point with that that, you can't go any further and it's just, yeah. you, you know, and it, it's hard to reboot an entire universe as opposed to what we've done, what we've seen with Batman and Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You almost, if you're going to have to reboot a universe, you've got to do something kind of tricky and unique. And uh, it seems like that's what the flash tried to do. It failed miserably. So I don't know if Marvel looks at that and says, uh, maybe now is not the time. <laughs> you know, I yeah. just, it's, it's, you know, I just, I don't know where they go from here. My, my, always, my main concern was always like, if DC does this and we get to the point where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are dead, you lost me as a fan. I'm yeah. sorry. You know, that's just me. You know, uh, you made, you brought up, I don't know if you were just joking, busting Eric's balls because, you know, he's got that big beef with Chris Nolan, but it's still going. What the hell's going on there? What, what's the deal? I see all I just I don't know. Is there Eric and Nolan? They just they can't get on the same page. They Nolan have a, can't like, make a, a movie fight? that Eric likes. No, it's just it's more like one of those like popcorn battles in the movie theater. You know, Nolan can't make a movie that Eric likes, and Eric doesn't like movies that Nolan makes, and there's just you know, they can't seem to please each other. So well, he's the toughest critic that Hollywood's yeah. ever seen that Eric Holzman. That's why he's the you, champion uh, of Long Island. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm with you on that. You gotta be. With you, the champion of Long Island. I but you brought up what you know they should have listened to Nolan, you know, 10, 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago. I, I I'm with you on that. I've said that for 10, 11 years. They would have been in way better shape if they had just you know, what if you don't know what Nolan his recommendation was to just make good DC movies. Don't worry about copying Marvel, don't or it's really Disney MCU. Uh and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. And they had to have their shared universe, and it was a colossal disaster. And here they are trying again. And you get me on another. I mean, it's just like it makes no sense to me. Hey, you, okay, you just had it, and you have Mar. You know, you have the MCU kind of running low on fumes. It's just I don't. I don't know. I think they'd be better off. History like, tends to repeat itself, doesn't it? Uh, yes. A wise man I uh, was discussing this with sit and sent me a. A text of the old pit, you know, the whole saying, uh, those who ignore history are, are doomed to repeat it. So, yeah. Um, one last thing with that is uh, like the Superman. I know we, I've said it with you before. I, I, I wish Superman Legacy was just a Superman film. I, I'm not really, it, it, I was excited for it because I liked, I thought the casting was good. I, I was a big fan of Rachel Brosnahan. Um, Marvelous Miss Maisel. It's a great show, yeah. great series. And I liked uh what's his name? Who's the guy they cast as Superman? Um Cronin something. They're gonna take our Superman cards away now. Yeah. Can't even I mean who, between he just getting cast and the strike, they can't blame me. <laughs> what's his name? Uh it's David something. David uh Corn. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. My bad. Sorry, David. Uh, jeez. Uh, you know, all I know is that Johnny Sins was cast as Lex Luthor. <laughs> that that, that, that the, destroyed the internet for a while. Oh, hey, Graceland. Yeah. <laughs> We've got that going. David, David Corn Sweat. Corn my Sweat. Bad. I was Crows. Yeah. I said Corn Cronin. <laughs> Corn Sweat. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought the casting was cool. And then they went up and they're going to have freaking Green Lantern and Hawk Girl. And I got to see how much these guys play into it. I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Like, I mean, if they come back after the strike and they can't tell me who uh, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, and Mom Pot Kent are, then things change. You know, like I just feel like Mojo was disrupted by the strike, and you know that that's what happens when we've been through these things. And 
you know, we got a little taste of that in the, what was it like 2007, 2008, but uh, this is a totally different animal. I think this is even going on longer from what I remember. I wasn't paying too much attention to that 07 strike. So I'm not too familiar with it. I should probably go back and look it up, but this feels twice as long. Well, it certainly tempered my, tempered my tempered uh, excitement for Superman legacy because uh just like to see a Superman movie without all these DC cameos, which clearly if it wasn't, you know, starting a shared universe, you probably wouldn't had Green Lantern, Hawk yeah. Girl, who's in there, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Elongated yeah, Man. Terrific. Plastic um, Man. Yeah, my whole thing is just like, when is the solo movie going to come back into fashion? Like, when is that going to become popular again? Because that's kind of what I'm it waiting sh- for. <laughs> it should well, the Batman, it, it did kind of good, didn't it? So, anyway, and kind Batman of... Batman and Joker, yeah. That's about it. Yeah, you know, and speaking of casting and the Batman, I wouldn't be surprised if Reeves has locked down some some people for for some roles already. Um, like, he can think know. of them. He just can't actually contact them, right? I'm not sure how that works, but, you know, they work. They, they, there seems to have been casting going on, even when the strike, the you know, the, when the writers were striking. Because, like, um, I remember Zachary Levi saying he can't even talk about past movies because of the strike. Like, there's certain things they can't yeah. discuss. Which I, I thought that was interesting. Oh, he can't even talk about like a movie he made three years ago. <laughs> yeah, weird. I don't know. So how it works, but yeah, at, li- at minimum, he's he probably knows who he wants. You know, yeah, or whatever, whoever's going to be in. The Batman part. Whoever he's going to cast is Solomon Grundy. I'm sure he has a good idea. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. they're going to do that CGI. It's going to be all yeah. CGI. Like Bane. Bane the, the Bane's going to be all CGI, yeah. too. Yeah. Bane will be CGI. He'll be like 10 foot tall. And then uh, it, the, the real clay face, the muddy clay face, will get that, too. Oh, that that's... Yeah. It's the only way to go. It's the only way to yeah. go. Uh, CGI, 10 foot Bane. Man Bat, throw that in there, too. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. I'm down for Man Bat. Dr. Phosphorus is happy to says just add him in, in the mix. Look at you. I like it. Dr. Phosphorus. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, okay. So we're going to talk since the whole point of this was a roundabout way of saying, yeah, there's no, because of the strikes, there is no Batman on film to discuss, even though we would be discussing the penguin and the Batman part two, most likely right now, if, if the strikes weren't happening. So we're kind of going back to the future and are uh, going back to the past at least so and ba- past batman movies and we've been doing the, you know these uh me and lauer did one we, we picked our top three batman first appearance that was a good show i enjoyed that one i really did batman first appearances like the first time you see batman in uh in a movie you got yeah. You got your top three real quick. First Batman appearances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. The top of my head, give me, of course. Give me your top three. Uh, yeah. Eighty nine. I'm Batman. Yeah. Uh, dark. Uh, dark Knight Rises. Uh, Batman's first return, being chased by the police. You know, uh, and the cop shoots him. He yeah. Says he's sorry, and then uh, the dock scene in begins. Nice. Yeah, the doc scene actually is probably one of my favorite fights. I'm I'm with you on the doc scene fight wise. Like a lot of people don't give it the credit I think it's deserved, and I'm with you. I think a lot of people overhype the uh, the Arkham stuff from uh, BBS. Yeah, that's which too... is very good. I can't say it's not good. No, it's, it's not. Not, it's not like, like it's not like done like well, scene. but it's it comes off a little much. Where the I I just I love the uh, being from the bad guys point of view getting your ass kicked by batman you know which mm-hmm. is what they did there so all right those are good ones um so you want to know what mine are not you but if you're listening you had watch that show go back to episode 127 and check that out all right um so today we're going to pick and pete's got like 38 songs but i said okay we'll do top i got five maybe six top five songs so actual songs that were in batman movies needle drops and uh not the score not batman not the batman not batman themes or 
or any of that, <clears throat> just songs. So, um, all right, just do this, Pete. You got it. You have a top five, and then you can talk about. Some, I do some I do. Uh, honorable mentions. Okay. Yeah. What's your number five? My number five is uh, mm -hmm. "Purple Lamborghini" by uh, Rick Ross and Skrillex from Suicide Squad. Okay. Okay. That was a, that was and a big song in the summer of uh, 2016. So and okay. And you want to go right through four? No, go. I just don't, tell me more about that. Why, oh why, yeah, why that so one? yeah. Uh, it was uh, it, that was oh man, the summer. This the well, I guess I, I guess it was March of 2016 was really something because you know it was before everything got sour. <laughs> So yeah. everyone was still very hyped on the upcoming DCU and blah, blah, and the Joker and everything. And we got a lot, we got a few more teases of Leto's Joker at the time. He was in the music video and it was just played on the radio. So like, it was actually really good for the movie and created a lot of buzz and positivity and curiosity about it. And it felt very Batman forever at the time, you know, between the music video and the PR that the, the movie was getting and everything. So okay. it was a very, it was probably the last positive moment we had as DC fans, in regards to the DCEU, at least, because everything okay. after that has been crazy. Okay, all right, Pete. Let's stop for just a moment on this podcast for these words from our sponsors. My number five is this is something relatively new. Something in the way by Nirvana from the Batman. Thought it was. No, it's a good one. I think it was just great. I know it's an older song <clears throat> uh, by an older band, which that that's weird for me to say that Nirvana is an older band. But yeah. anyway, that's a fact. Um, Nineteen ninety three is a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. And uh, but I thought it just uh, you know when the first trailer came out and they had it in there. You think it maybe they just used it for the trailer and then the, how they injected it into the film. It was just was perfect. And it's, you know, cool song. So, and you could see like Kurt Cobain influence Bruce Wayne in certain aspects. Yeah. You know, kind I mean, of his, his yeah, Reed said look, it. His, yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's interesting because you mentioned it is an older song. Nirvana is a band that has its time in the sun. Like you still, and is very legendary. You still see people today in Nirvana t-shirts, you know, oh, yeah. people who are in their teens. So the band's legacy carries out and uh, it's still impressive to be put in a movie, you know, so many years later and be such a focal point of the movie, not just as a song, but kind of as an attitude, as a, as, as an inspiration for character as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, it's fascinating. The the just the mood of it really fit the scenes that it's uh you mm. hear it in in the Batman. All right. Yeah. Number four. What you got? Number four. I have Face to Face by Soshi and the Banshees from Batman Returns. Okay. And obviously for that classic scene with uh, Bruce and uh, Selena in uh, Shrek's uh, party, um, it was it's the only song in Batman Returns not performed uh, or created by Danny Elfman. Um, it was uh, it was it, it was a, a big deal for Mr. Elfman to do something like that because he was very uh, upset about uh, him having to share the limelight with Prince for the last movie. Yeah. And um, it's just a fascinating song it, it almost kind of if it wasn't for that scene it would feel totally out of place in a batman movie but yeah. it works perfectly and i believe the band created it specifically for the film okay very good all right my number four is the beginning is the end is the beginning from uh from uh batman forever by smashing pumpkins i thought that was batman and robin Oh, that's my bad. Yeah, it is. Batman yeah. and Robin. Okay. I was thinking, uh, well, I'll get to the one, the other one in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins from Batman and Robin. Not the greatest movie, but I do like, I like that song. And it was kind of. some good music videos for that yeah. movie. The music video the music was cool. <laughs> I yeah. mean, seeing the music video before the movie came out, I was, you know, still, I, I, I was hyped up for Batman and Robin. Yeah. Um, but coming off of Batman Forever, mm -hmm. and 
even with Val Kilmer not in it, uh, I was a big ER fan back then, like well, like everybody, like everybody else. else. Yeah. And so, you know, George Clooney in it was was cool. So, and then I saw it, and that's a whole different story. So, yes, thank you for uh correct me. It is, you know, especially Republicans, it was Batman and Robin. Okay. All right. Number three, what do you have? Three, I have uh, Party Man by Prince from 89. Okay. Just classic scene, classic song. <laughs> it's, 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 it's probably, you know, you can't help but just start dancing when you hear it. It's probably, it's probably my favorite song from 89. Meanwhile, there's another song that we'll, we'll mention later on that obviously kind of takes the cake, but Party Man is, uh, is something special. Just watching Jack do his thing. <laughs> While this music is going on, there's is nothing short of a dream come true. My number three. Would you like to guess what my number three is? Uh, I'm gonna get. Oh, man, is it Bat Dance? No, it's Party Man by Prince from <laughs> Batman '89. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> great minds, right? I mean, it, it's 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 a great song. You can yeah. put this song on at any party and people are going to start moving and grooving. It's yeah. just, that's yeah. Prince baby. <laughs> so for all, for all the reasons you said already, it's my number three as well. Uh, number two, number two, I have bat dance. Okay. It's just the music video. I honestly think rivals thriller just in like production value and everything. Cause it's, it's a really crazy music video. You know, it's almost a movie in itself. Uh, the costumes are fantastic. The dancing, uh, it just, I, <laughs> I, I love it. it. It's, it is, I've grown on bat dance. Like it was always a good song in my opinion, but I've really grown to love it over the years, especially when I, when I retroactively did that, uh, Batman on film, uh, like barbecue playlist article. Like I, I was, as I was listening to all the the, the out uh, yeah. the inspired by music, and I was just really like I was, was like wow I kind of I kind of shortchanged Bat Dance in my own little head there, but uh, it's really a phenomenal song and another phenomenal music video. All right, my number two is "Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me" by U two from Batman Forever. That's a good one. That's a good. That's another great music video. Yeah, great music video. Um. Remember seeing Batman Forever, <clears throat> really liking it, you know, and then that that closing credits with that with that song was just now it's very nineties, you know. Yeah. As far as you know, closing it with uh, a Batman just movie, guitar riffs, very, <laughs> very popcorn movie, you know. Uh, let's close out with a rock and roll song, but hey, maybe it's nostalgia, but I like it so. Everything uh, works for Batman Forever except for Tommy Lee my, Jones. That's my number. <laughs> that's my number two. All right, what is the top of your list? Uh, this has to be obvious. It's Kiss from a Rose by Seal from Batman Forever. Guess what? Number one. That's you too. Yeah. Or are you as well? <laughs> yeah. You too. Yeah. You know, this is the song that Eric Holzman sang for his uh, American Idol audition. Kiss from a Rose. Is that right? Yes, it is. So, a little bat trivia for you. Wow. America's got talent. Thought he was thought, did he do the voice? Uh I don't know. I know he did uh, I know he did Ameri uh was American Idol, American Idol. Okay. So, he's got pipes. The guy's got pipes. Yeah. Okay. He's not quite like seal, but he's got them. Yeah. That was uh people um I think don't like especially today I, we talked about this when we talk about batman forever um it, it kind of gets lost in the mix with batman and robin a lot of revisionist history with batman and forever. yeah and people either conveniently forget or they weren't around or whatever for whatever reason batman forever was a huge huge hit in 1995 Big hit. It was like number yeah. two movie of the year. All that, you know, that that Batman Forever soundtrack was mm -hmm. awesome and did very well. I had it on a on a uh compact disc back in the, the day. Merch, the toys, toys sold. Right and on. so and it had some really good tie-in music. All right. Um 
since you've got several several um, runners up, any you want to mention? I just, a, a fun fact about Kiss from a Rose, okay. if, you, if you'll let me. It was actually created by Seal in 1994, the song, and it was on a previous album. And then when Schumacher reached out to him, Seal, about a song for the movie, he said he didn't have a spot for the song in the film, but it would be in his end credits and that he would also direct a new music video for Seal for the, vi- for the video, uh, for the song. And uh, Seal took him up on it and said, uh, fine, I'll, I'll do it. That, you know, like, yeah. You can use the song. So that, I, I think that was pretty cool. That music video was big as hell too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big. I mean, the bat signal just rotated. Yeah. Joel did a fantastic job actually directing that music video. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just fun little I, trivia about the song. I, I I didn't think that there was not any other song that I thought would be could be number one other than that. So, yeah, it's tough. With it really the, yeah. with as good as Prince is though, like Kiss from a Rose was just so big. I mean that thing, that music the, between Kiss from a Rose and the and the U two song, it really kept me in check just watching MTV for the music video and getting a little bit of Batman until the movie came out. Yeah. You know, like the, instead yes. of me going to the theater to watch the trailer for 89, I would watch MTV to get just clips of Batman in music videos. I think that, that was kind I, of what I did. I am positive that I actually taped the video, the music videos like OVHS taped them from MTV Kiss from a Rose. Over a bad Cowboys loss to the Giants. Yeah, probably. <laughs> In 95, that wasn't happening, sir. Um, That's true. But, Those dynasty but, uh, years. Yeah. Um, Those are good years for both of us. So, um, but I had, you know, Kiss from a Rose and then the U2 uh, song, the, the music mm. videos on a VHS tape. Yeah, that's funny. You bring it up, but like recording over stuff. That's just so out of, not even in reality anymore today. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some people the old know story, what... like the guy tapes over his his uh, wedding tape for like the yeah. eighty five AFC Championship game. <laughs> it's like uh, I guarantee you, my son Jake has no idea what that means. No idea. If I say, does he even know what an answering machine is? Like, think about it. I don't know. Probably not. Like, when was the last time Jake saw a phone booth? Superman seventy eight. <laughs> like a, and that was that, and that was like the that was like the upgrade phone booth. You know, that, was that like wasn't even a booth. It was one. just yeah, yeah the it was half stand. a stand. I just think that's yeah, DVDs and compact disc and VHS tapes. Man, yeah. VHS was still big in ninety five. Yes, it was. I owned Batman for VHS. Yeah. I, oh, Jesus. So did I. Yeah. He knows VHS because when he was a kid, he was born in, you know what? I don't even, jeez. He was born in 2001. That kid's never watched a VHS. I, I mean, he had this, he had a little video compact disc player in the car. Uh-huh. He called his watcher. And it, and he had. Portable DVD player. Okay. Yeah, and he had um, a big bag full of all his movies, and he put them in. But I was yeah. thinking about that the other day because, like, every once in a while, when I take the train to work, there's there's still like an abandoned phone. Not it's not a phone booth, but it's like a pay phone. But it's just like a stand. The phone's gone, but it's just the the the, the pole and the and the backboard it's that still held there, it. Still there, huh? Like, I was like, man, I remember putting my rent, my, making the rings with my index finger and my thumb so my mouth wouldn't touch the, the speaker God, and all the I tricks used, of the train to the phone book. Remember that stuff? Yeah, I used a damn. I, I can say I've actually used a pay phone many times. Every time life. I missed the school bus, I would have to get on a pay phone and call my mom or my dad collect to get a ride home. Yeah, that's another thing. As your kid who, ever called? Who knows what that means? I made collect calls. Call? Yeah. 1 yeah. 800 collect, 1 800 call ATT. Like, they were, remember those 1 800 yeah. collect numbers yeah. everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> the last time you made, and the trick of the trade was when they asked you for what your name was, Mom, I'm late for school, pick me up, and you hang up. Yeah. They charge you. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, and there's collect calls. I, I'm a generation 
ahead of you and it blows kind of you went so there there was things i'm sure from the 70s and stuff you're not familiar with but i mean well, i remember my mother would go to the gas station and buy high test yeah i never bought high test i just but uh, you know regular <laughs> yeah was the gasoline high test it's because it was like you know like technology like entertainment technology kind of moved at a snail's pace through the 70s and 80s. But by the time the 90s started coming, then it just accelerated. So it did, because then you, you had mini discs, then you started yeah. MP3s and everything. Like, man, me, the way they would share music by the time I got to college was insane. I mean, I was Napster <laughs> and all that. Oh, my God. I stole so much music in college. It's like, because everyone's on the same network in the dorms. Yeah. So we're all just sharing files. So I'm copying everybody I live with music library. <laughs> My music library in college was so eclectic because I just stole everybody's music. Man, the good old days. Okay, this 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 went in a went off on a on a down a rabbit hole, but yeah, I mean that's, that's who would have thought about. Jake Ramey would have led to a conversation about collect calls. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that wasn't. He's getting a lot of love today. That, that kid. wasn't on my run sheet for this show for sure. So, <laughs> but that's true. Uh, hell, I even asked Micah. He may not even know what a collect call is. Wow. Did you ever uh, you ever do an emergency breakthrough when you call a line? It was busy. No. Call the operator and go. I need to do an emergency breakthrough. I didn't know that. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. And they would. Uh, that's not thing. People don't know what 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 busy a busy signal is when you call so you would you would get a busy signal and ask the operator for emergency breakthrough and they would cut the call and give it to you they would they would cut in on the call and say you have an emergency uh request from whoever you are i had no idea they did that yeah that's a wow wow you probably uh, you probably don't remember not having um what is it uh when you god that now I'm 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 at a loss for work. Uh, you know when when you call and uh, it, it doesn't go busy. It just you know you can switch over. You know another call. Hold on. You know boom. You hit you know hit. The oh, you have like another line. Not another line. You know when you're on the phone with someone, right? Oh, call waiting. Then, call waiting. Yeah, there you go. What the hell's wrong with me? Yeah, you. That was probably that was before call waiting because it was. The, I knew. Do you, about rem- call do you remember not remember. having call waiting? We did not have call waiting in my house. So you just, like it, 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 if someone was just, on like the you're phone, on the phone, it, it would, it, if I was on the phone with somebody, me, yeah. somebody called me, it would just, I would get like a beep. Yeah. Okay. Beep in my ear. Okay. So, all right. Cause there was, I remember when there was no call waiting. Mm-hmm. That's where the emergency right. breakthrough was. I don't know. God, emergency breakthrough. This is so I remember when ass. I was like eight years old, they made us put the area code before every phone number. And I was like, there's I get three more numbers. What is it? <laughs> I remember that. I just, that was a yeah. big deal for me. All right, Let's get back on track here. Got you. Got to give me some more uh, honorable mentions. Uh, I have "Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me" at six. Okay, so it's not All right. It's basically, you know, it's an honorable mention. "Smash It Up" by The Offspring. That was in Batman Forever, uh, I believe. Um, it is during Dick Grayson's uh, theft of the Batmobile. Um, okay. Uh, I have at number eight. I have "The Riddler" by Method Man. Um, that's that's a good actually one. a fun song. Um, Look Into My Eyes by Bone Thugs and Harmony from Batman and Robin at number eight, uh, at number nine. I have, I can't remember which one's which, so 10 and 11 is either the end or the beginning from Batman and Robin by the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> I always get the beginning the is the end use. is the beginning, yeah. Yeah, and then the other one's called The Beginning is the End is the End is the Beginning. So yeah. they, they do a little wordplay with the, uh, with the title there. And then at number 12, I have Where Are You Now by Brandy. That's on the Batman Forever soundtrack. And that's actually a, a forgotten song. It's a very good song if you're into like R&B slow stuff. There is. Okay. I have. I'm going to mention one because those are all good. Honorable mention. I'm Batman from the Lego Batman movie. Okay. I didn't know we were including animation. But yeah. All right. You can go animation. All right, that, that's There's a good just one. not that much to pick from. Movie. I mean, it, so, but I, uh, yeah. Oh, there, there's a there that that movie basically has a double album. There's an entire yeah. score to Would it. Would you have inclu- entire okay? If I drops. sorry, I I should have said yeah. You can throw in animation. Would you have? Is there anything from animation you would have moved up into 
top 10, top five, top whatever. If you had known I, that. I am you... Batman by Patrick Stump might be up there in the top five. It might have knocked off Purple okay. Lamborghini. Yeah. It's a fun song. And the way that it opens up with the movie, that's, that's yeah. pretty epic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Who doesn't I... skip leg day? Not bad, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great movie. All right. All right, some good stuff. We had we were uh we had a couple that were the same in the top five. Yeah, it's we tough also had because some, some of these weren't. songs are great. They they mm-hmm. you know, like I feel like my top three is it's it's tough to beat, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's that you know, it's very tough. I would I wouldn't want the like for like the Batman part two or the Batman, I wouldn't want a soundtrack score, you know, soundtrack that went, that was inspired by the movie to go with it. Like we got for Batman forever and Batman and Robin. Not unless Reeves wanted it to. Like yeah. if that was the movie but, Reeves was making. Yeah. I'd accept. But it. cause I think it's, I think it's so very nineties, but I will say that it was cool. That was cool stuff back then. Those those uh those I can't say it's very nineties because I feel like the Guardians of the Galaxy brought it back. Kind of, yeah. That's those fair. three movies, you know, the first movie I remember like Suicide Squad came out and everyone's claiming it as finally DC's got their Guardians. And it was have obviously Guardians is a heavy influence based on just how that movie looks yeah. after the 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 B, B takeover and the soundtrack. You know, so I think Guardians and I mentioned this in my article a couple of years ago, like Guardians kind of brought re- revived the inspired by various artists soundtrack. It kind of brought it back to the to to the front lines here because it it, ha- it kind of has been forgotten since. Tell OG. me if I'm I don't because I don't know so I'm asking: Is there any original songs on the Guardians soundtracks, or are, are they old like? No, it's all established? James Gunn's like personal hits. You know, yeah, these that's are, what I thought. These are songs that. He probably had some emotional tie to that. He was he yeah. equated to Peter Quill or whoever was starring in that scene at that time. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's a good example. Like he he wrote the movie. Like that's what I'm saying. When like you're like, I don't know if I want the Batman do, but if Reeves came out a Batman movie the way Gunn did his Guardians films, and I was like, all right, that's again like like we've always said here on BOF, like director's vision, see it through. If it sucks, then we move on. You know, like. <laughs> Let's let's see this through. I'd be all for it if if that's what Reeves wanted. But uh, you know, he, I think as close as we're going to get to it, that is uh, something in the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 with you on that. I I think that it's it's very cool still <clears throat> to have that as part of Batman on film history. Having those two, you know, big. I don't. I know the Batman Forever soundtrack was big, huge. It was yeah. all over MTV. I don't. I can't. I'm not sure how the Batman and Robin soundtrack did, but um, if if you the, look the at the music Batman video, and Robin soundtrack, big. yeah, it might have been more '90s than Batman Forever, to be honest okay. with you. Okay, you know, you, you got a lot of '90s hip hop in there. You got Jewel in there. <laughs> it's very, very okay. '90s. Um, the Batman and Robin soundtracks was the music videos were played. Like that was still big. '97 yeah. was still big for MTV. Still big for music videos. So you know. I think, you know, as as they did with Batman and Robin, it was just kind of like, you know, let's kind of repeat what we did previously. Yeah. 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 Certainly Batman Forever, that one was a big deal. All right. So I think that'll do it for this. So any final words? Um kind of said it all, I think. The this actual like just music, um, for Batman and Robin, Golden Thaw kind of got the short end of the stick uh for that movie. Because his original score is very hard to find. It's a two disc album. I believe you can only buy it online. Oh, for Batman and the Batman and for Robin. Batman and Robin. The, the two disc. It's it's very difficult to find. I was able to find it, and I was able to share it with uh, a fellow BWF for Brian Damaso and uh, a fellow podcaster Andy D. Genova because we you know we're big music guys. And we like to collect this stuff as, as most of us do. And uh, we were able, I was able to, you know, sh- Hey, look, it's, it's here. This is where we could finally pick this up because it's very hard to find. So he kind of got a, he kind of got the short end of the stick there because uh, it's his, 
his Batman theme from the opening credits is in the soundtrack of the movie, but uh, his original scores, you can only find it online. It's very difficult. You can't buy hmm. it in iTunes or anything like that. Yeah, well, it's it's very interesting. Well, speaking of the score, I mean, I'm sure at some point we will talk about, you know, the, we'll, our favorite, where we'll rank the, the musical scores, the Batman themes or whatever. I, to be honest, I've liked all of them from all the movies. So it would be I'm putting hard. something be fun. together right now for the BOF, yeah. the main BOF podcast. And right now, scheduling is a little bit difficult because I want to have a really good panel for this one. But I, I want to, I'm trying to get together a Batmobile theme show, like a Batmobile music as in theme. That's the theme of the, the you know, of the music okay. that we see. And uh, I'll tell you what, just for me, but Descent into Mystery, it's tough to beat. It's tough to beat. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. As a, just as a piece of music. Yeah, as a Batman piece of music, yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's about right. one minute of glory. <laughs> um, I know, I, I know you have something to plug, so go ahead and plug. Uh yeah. If you uh, if you like what you hear from me here, you could uh, follow my uh, my uh, other podcast. I co-host with the uh, champion of Long Island, Eric Holzman, straight out of Gotham at straight underscore o underscore g. Uh, we're both on Instagram and Twitter. We also have a Facebook group and a Facebook fan page. Uh, if you're into Spider-Man, I have a Spider-Man podcast, Italian Spider-Man Coalition, at Italians for Spidey on Twitter. Check that out. It's a monthly podcast. Uh, check out at Team Yellow Oval. A lot of fun stuff going on there. I appear monthly on Brian. Uh, Brian. There you go. Brian Lauer, or Ryan Lauer's cousin. On Ryan Lauer's <laughs> The Batman Book Club. That's uh, his twin brother. Monthly. Doesn't he have a twin brother, Brian and Ryan Lauer? He might, he might, he might keep him secret. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I told you he's a sneaky one. That Lauer, he's a sneaky guy. Um, you follow, uh, you can follow me uh, there at each at Team Yellow Oval. I'm on BatmanOnFilm.com, Batman on Film YouTube. I got reviews of Detective Comics. I got toy reviews. I have an interview with Mr. Uslan. If you like this show, check out my article that I did on uh, uh, music, uh, Batmobile and uh, Bat- Batman inspired songs. Uh, the list will be very similar, so check that out. Uh, it goes a little deeper. Um, and if you want to follow me personally, I'm on Twitter at Pete Illustrated. So, you know, hit me up on that. Still calling it Twitter, like me, right? Uh, I have to type in twitter.com to get to the website. So it's still Twitter to me, okay. right? That makes I'll sense. I'll go with that. Yeah. I can't call it X. All right. Uh, as for me, just go to Batman on Film, Batman on film.com. Um, Batman Podcast Network. You can find that and all those shows on Batman on Film. Just find the Dropbox, which is podcast and it'll be in that that drop down menu and uh hell i think that's about it uh everything else and also rachel will hit up in the outro and thanks for listening we will catch you next time you have been listening to the bof social hour jet's official podcast on batman on film Follow BOF on threads at The Batman on Film. Follow BOF on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Batman on Film. To help keep BOF up and running, go to patreon.com slash Batman on Film. Or you can buy BOF a beer at buymeacoffee.com slash The Real Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original Batman on Film, founded in 1998.